Hi everyone, I'm going to do the fourth <laughs> painting paper, collage paper and this time we are going to be doing something like the only way I can describe it is pulling paint so for this you only need anything that uh, reacts with water and a non-porous surface now I took this page protector and I'm just going to insert some white paper inside us just so you will see whatever I'm doing I could uh, uh, just do it on uh, my desk but it's better to do it on something else so I've got this and as I said anything that reacts with water and I'm going to do all kinds of uh, examples I'm going to start with gelatos Again, they are reacting with uh, with water, so I'm just going to put this like so, and some water, and a brush, so to activate it and smear it around. Now, this I use a, for a small surfaces. <laughs> <laughs> and right now I'm just using some uh, cardstock that uh, I cut to a tag and I'm going to pull it like this and whatever goes goes like so I'm just pulling whatever I have here and getting this now a uh, I can uh, switch to another color or I can uh, wait for this to dry and then switch. It depends what colors you are using. I'm going to take something to wipe my surface here so I can move to another color. So with this, uh, as I said, I'm using for a small... A surfaces like this uh, also distress inks I usually use for uh, smaller surfaces and what color do I want let's well let's go pink I don't know let's have fun with it okay once again same thing water I didn't clean my brush so as you can see I'm getting a little bit of purple here and again pulling now it depends how much pigment you have in the color you are using it's as you can see it's really uh, subtle and where are my uh, <laughs> paper towels here we go just like so I can switch to anything else like this press inks this is picked raspberry again activating I can also again take a brush and move it along if I don't want it to stay in this shape and picking up the paint and of course you can uh, do as many colors as you want as many uh, layers as you want I'm leaving this and just putting it aside let's take a book page this is a, a from a dictionary and let's do something else so I'm using distress ink now I've got a fossilized amber. I will also a. Uh, <laughs> I, I've been uh, sick for a few days, so and my brain <laughs> I think didn't restart. So uh, I will also also show you how to do this kind of technique on a uh, larger uh, pages. So, picking up the fossilized ember, 
like so. Wiping. I'm moving on to a spiced marmalade. Of course, if I have a larger page, I can go all over. So I will have more coverage. Once again, I'm going to take a brush and just spread it. The more you wait, the more the uh, paper will absorb the color, the, the paint that you have. You can hardly see the difference between the two colors, but it is there. Now, if I want to switch to uh, this broken china, but I don't want to create mud between the yellow and uh, orange to this, so I'm going to let this dry and then I'm going to uh, introduce the broken uh, china. So I'm, I'll be back. Okay, I'm back and this is dry. Now I'm going to add from this broken china. Again, the same thing. And some water. Again, my brush is not completely clean, but I don't care. And I'm picking up paint. Yeah, just layering and whatever goes, goes. Here we go. I'm going to let this dry and I'm looking at my tag that I've done before. I'm feeling like it needs something more to it. Let's pick now watercolors because it also water. So again, Let's see, let's add, I'm going with, I don't know, maybe orange and yellow. Let's see, another brush. And I can also add water more if I want to. And again, picking up paint. Now I like it. And again, this needs to be uh, to dry. So these are examples for small pages. And let's move on to something else. So just I'm taking now some. This is sketch paper from one of my uh, journals that are in sketchbooks and I'm always tearing some of the pages so it won't get bulky and I'm going to do this let's do some with with watercolors and I'm going to pick a larger brush so I can uh, work quickly and cover more of the surface and let's go some blue like so and I'm taking now some purple I'm just playing it's not I haven't planned on anything and whatever goes goes we are just making painty collage papers and having fun now if i haven't <laughs> said it before all these painty collage papers they can be a you can use them as is and you can also work on them until you like them and you can stamp on them and you can stencil on, on them whatever you like and just putting it down and letting it soak and pulling so I've got this and I can switch sizes and pulling paint 
and I can also add more water like this and I can work it and work it until everything is covered or I can just leave it as is so again this is also something that you can use all kinds of paper and have fun with it moving this aside and let's wipe what's going on here i'm making a mess as usual okay one more example and i'm going to take i've got this silicon uh, mat for baking it's from the baking aisle in the cheap store and I'm always using it uh, as my preferred uh, non-porous uh, substrate. So, when I want to do larger uh, pages, I don't have one uh, right now, but I'm going to use now printer paper. And I want to show you that you can do the same thing with acrylics. So, and for this, it's better to have the cheapest acrylics, the runny ones. Don't, <laughs> you can do it with the better ones, but it's <laughs> if you have the craft ones, the runny ones, uh, it's better. So I'm just picking up some, as, as I said, it wasn't quite planned, so <laughs> I'm just picking up now some colors here. Let's see, let's take some blue. Let's take some, I don't know, some pinkish color and let's go bold with the yellow, we'll see. And again, basically it's the same technique. Now if you're, uh, I like to uh, mark my page so I don't need to spread the paint all over so I know uh, approximately where it goes and I can put the paint however I want I'm just it can be in dots it can be in stripes it really doesn't matter the only thing is to spread it with a lot of water and okay no pinky Let's pick another color. So, okay, so I grabbed some purple here. And now I don't want the yellow to be with this, so I'm grabbing another color. So, so again, lots of, uh, for this you need a lot of water especially because now we are working with acrylics and they are thicker I probably put too much uh, paint but never mind and I'm also letting the colors mix The more color, the more uh, watercolor effect you will get. Less color, the more splotchy, I don't know, solid color you will get. Just play with it. It's fun. Each time you will get a different result. So I'm putting it here and letting it soak, but not too much. And look at this beautiful paper. And I can still pick more. I'm moving this aside. I've got a lot more going on here. So I'm just putting more water because I want to spread it. And with the brush, I'm also mixing and taking another printer paper. Like so and pulling the paint. I'm loving it. It's so beautiful. 
Okay, just because I still got more paint here, I'm just going to lift it. And of course, you don't have to put the whole paper. I can also do something like this and just pick some and play with it. That's the whole point. Play with it, have fun. And whatever it turns out, that's, that's what you have. And it's beautiful. And the fact that it's random is, I think it's better. Here we go. I'm picking all, almost all the paint left here. Now I can also uh, let it dry and I can continue building layers on top of it. I'm going to let this specifically uh, dry because it has le it's less vibrant than the others because I had a uh, less paint here and I'm going to sh show you that I can build on top of it. I'll be back. Okay, I'm back and this is dry. I want to add more colors to it. And another option is sprays. Now I am making my own because we don't have brushes here and the other <laughs> other sprays are just too expensive. These are made from gel food coloring, not the supermarket kind. And they are not with sugar. It's just uh, from uh, where you buy things for baking, specialized things for baking. I don't know how to call it and um, so few dro drops of gel food coloring with water and I don't have measurements I just check I put some uh, drops water if it's intense enough it's good if not I just add more uh, gel food coloring and there are another option for a uh, sprays if you don't have the fancy uh, stuff like brushes is using the powders uh, for a textile dye so uh, that's another option you just put a little very little of the powder and water and again you've got a spray and so i'm just going to put down again spray like this and i'm not spraying my uh, page the whole point is picking up the pulling of the paint and how and even adding more water and letting it uh, like this it's a different effect from just spraying your page like so you get all these uh, water uh, puddles I don't know what to call them and it's a different effect if you want to spray your page of course you can but now I'm just showing this technique of pulling paint Here we go, adding color. And of course, I, you can add from anything you want. Just layer until you like what you have. And now I'm going to add some, I want it vibrant. I'm adding some orange now. And picking up randomly. Wherever it goes, it goes. And I've got a lovely a painty paper or collage paper that I can do whatever I want. I can use it as is, or as I said, you can still work on it with stamps, stencils, whatever you like. You can tear it, you can punch uh, all kinds of shapes out of it. It can be used for embellishments whatever uh, you like. I'm going to add some yellow now. And let's add a little bit of water and spread it. Now, just be careful uh, if you're like now, I'm adding and adding and my page uh, is quite wet so I need to <laughs> be careful so that 
it won't tear as I'm holding it and I think this is done and let's wipe the excess here and I'm going back to my tag just so you can see what you can do with it and I'm just picking random a stamp and I'm going to use the same colors I've used here and let's go vibrant so I'm uh, using the picked raspberry and I'm going to add interest to my background like so and I could also stencil on it it's, it's what you decide you want to do I still have a uh, here uh, ink so I'm going on this okay so now I want to add something more to these pages again I'm just picking a uh, stamps that I have here on hand and I haven't planned on this so that's a problem <laughs> not everything is planned okay I'm taking this one and now I'm uh, taking the fossilized ember and again stamping I already got an interesting background for this tag this is just one more painty paper for the stash and I'm thinking I'm taking this broken china and going over the edges like so it's already taking shape I hope to do a um, the next video with some of the pulled paint papers I've done uh, use it I'm not sure we'll see <laughs> and I think it needs more of the blue here so I'm going to take uh, some makeup brush and just don't know how much of it you can see but I'm just adding a little bit more of this mostly towards the edges and maybe later on I will find something like a focal image to put on or I don't know some words it's still a work in progress so that was the pulling <laughs> paint uh, technique for painting collage papers and I hope you will have fun making lots and lots of uh, pages, papers uh, for your stash. So thank you for watching and thank you for leaving me comments down below. I'll be seeing you in my next video. Bye for now.